So let's take a look at part D here. And I will, I'd asked you to try this one before uh, coming in today. So let me talk through what, uh, what I see on this problem. What I see is a little bit of a mess happening on the bottom. And I also see that the derivative of it would involve uh, a theta to the one half. And I see, oh, good news. There's a theta to the one half up here. So something's happening to this one plus theta to the three halves because it's on the bottom. And also the derivative, which would involve a theta to the one half is somewhere else in the problem. So those are my two clues that u should be one plus theta to the three halves. And du will be uh, three halves times theta to the d theta. Oh, I don't want it to match with uh, three halves theta to the one half. I want it to match with 10 theta to the one half. Okay, so let's see. That's going to require, uh, that's going to require dividing by three on both sides to get rid of, uh, to get rid of this three here. Uh, and then that would leave me with a one half. And so to get back to 10, I need to multiply by 20. So this will be 20 thirds. So the 20 thirds would come out of my integral. And then I have a uh, just u on the bottom. And then on top, I just have a 1 and a du. So instead of 10 theta to the 1 half d theta, we're just going to have du. And the bounds, remember to change the bounds, we plug into u. This is the new thing. And so instead of uh, going from zero to one, I'm going to go from one plus zero to the three halves. That's going to be one. And instead of, uh, instead of one on my top bound, my top bound is going to be one plus one to the three halves is going to be two. So my integral is now going to be from one to two. So that's your new step. And then you should be able to go from there. Similar thing on part E. Here's what I see. Well, the first thing I see is that that's an x squared plus one. So that looks a lot like inverse tangent, but oh no, we have an x on the top. So it's not going to be an inverse tangent going on. Well, what's the other thing I see? Well, what if I made u this x squared plus one? Oh, well then du would be the thing on the top. So this one's actually pretty similar to the last one. Oh, I don't want it to match it with two x dx. I want it to match it with x dx. And so one half du is what I substitute for. So one half is going to come out in front. And the U is on the bottom. And instead of X DX, I'm just going to have DU. One DU. 
And then here comes the new part. We got to change our bounds. So instead of going from negative one to three, I'm going to put that in for X and see what I should get out for you. Instead of negative one, let's take negative one squared. That's going to be one plus one is two on the bottom. Instead of three on the top, I'm going to plug in uh, three squared, which is nine plus one is 10. So we're going from two to 10. And this one I will go ahead and do. Antiderivative here is the natural log of the absolute value of u. That's from 2 to 10. So plug in 10 minus plug in 2. Which, if you remember your properties of logarithms, and it's okay if you don't, They'll take this form written out. But if you do want to simplify it, natural log of 10 minus natural log of 2 is natural log of 10 over 2. So it's natural log of 5. All right, let's look at an actual free response. So this is how they might ask about substitution. And they might ask it in the context of um, a larger integral that you're taking. So let f of x equal g of x minus cosine of x over 2. So for part a, it's asking us to find the integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi of f of x. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to split the integral up. So that's going to equal the integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi of g of x dx minus the integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi of cosine of x over 2 dx. So I'm going to treat them as two separate integrals. Now I'm gonna give you about two minutes and I wanna see if you can figure out what these integrals are gonna be. I wanna see if you can get uh, at least one of them, if not both of them. So I'll give you two minutes to try and figure out and work through what that would be. Integral from negative two pi to four pi of g of x dx. Well, here's the graph of g. And so what I'm looking for is what is this area? That's what an integral would tell me. It would tell me the area under this curve. Well, that's just a triangle. And so the area should be one half base times height. What is my base? Well, my base goes from negative two pi out to four pi. So my total base there is going to be 6 pi times my height is 2 pi. So that's going to be 6 pi squared. So I have a pi times pi. That's pi squared. Now the integral from negative two pi to four pi of cosine of x over two dx. What I'm hoping you guys did was a u substitution. 
it made u x over two, the thing inside of there. And so du one half dx, and there isn't a one half there, so we're going to move it over here and say two du equals dx, sorry, dx. Because we don't have a one half here, so we want it to match. So a two comes outside of the integral. Cosine of u du. And now we got to change your bounds. Because we made u x over two. So instead of negative two pi to four pi, we're going to go from negative pi to two pi. Right, negative two pi over two and then four pi over two. Which equals two times. Antiderivative of a cosine is sine. From negative pi to two pi. So that's going to equal those but hopefully everyone should have sine of 2 pi is 0 and then sine of negative pi is the same as sine of pi which is also 0 so this part is 0 so the final answer is 6 pi squared because this integral is zero. Questions? Okay. Let me move on to part C. I want to take a look at, make sure we take a look at part C. Uh, while we're talking about integrals, and then we'll look at part B if we have time. Because this one, uh, this part has nothing to do with substitution. Part C, h of x is the integral from 0 to 3x of g of t dt. So we want to find h prime at 5 over 3. So let's do h prime. Two different ways to do this. You can plug in and evaluate the integral and then take the derivative. Easier way to do it is to say that the derivative of the integral will wind up back where we started. So we just need to do g of 3x. So the derivative of the integral will give us g of 3x. And then we need the chain rule times derivative of 3x is 3. So that is h prime of x. So I want uh, that at negative pi over 3. 3 times g of 3 times negative pi over 3. So we are asking for 3 times g of negative pi. And g of negative pi Well, g of negative pi will just say, what is my y-coordinate here? And y-coordinate there is just going to be 
pi. So 3 pi is our answer. So that's testing out fundamental theorem of calculus. All right. Uh, we have time for part B. Let's do it. F has a critical point. Now we're moving away from integrals entirely. So this is a review of something from last semester. F has a critical point when F prime equals zero or does not exist. So that is what we're looking for. We're looking for the derivative to be zero or to not exist. That's what we're looking for for a critical point. F prime of x equals, well, derivative of f should be derivative of g minus derivative of uh, cosine of x over 2 is negative sine of x over 2. but then it's not just negative sine of x over two because we need the chain rule times derivative of the inside part. Derivative of x over two is just going to be one half. So in other words, g prime of x plus one half sine of x over two. All right, so we want to look at for when this is zero or when this does not exist. All right, the easier one is to talk about when it doesn't exist. So let's start there. When does this not exist? Well, the only place this doesn't exist because sine exists everywhere. But there is a place where G prime doesn't exist. And that is where G is not differentiable, which is where we have a corner. And that's at two pi. So G prime doesn't exist. So that means F prime isn't gonna exist either. So F prime does not exist at X equals because we hit that corner. Now, f prime being zero is a little bit trickier. Because if we want to know where f prime is zero, then I won't finish this, but we will, I want to start you in this direction. Then I want to look for where g prime of x equals negative one half sine of x over two. Right, if I wanna know where this is zero, then I could subtract this from both sides. And I wanna know when this is true. And uh, we're looking for this at two different places. Because if I were to write g prime of x, we need to deal with g prime at two different places. From negative 2 pi to 0, and from 0 to 4 pi. 
And if we want to know where uh, G prime is from those two intervals, well, we look at the slope. And from negative 2 pi to 0, we're moving up 1 and to the right 1, up 1 and to the right 1. So my slope from negative 2 pi to 0 is 1. And then from 0 to 4 pi, I'm moving down 1 and to the right 2, down 1 and to the right 2. And so that is a negative 1 half. So I got two different equations that I'm looking for. I'm looking for from negative 2 pi to 0, where is this 1? And then from 0 to 4 pi, where is this negative 1 half? So that's going to be asking two different questions. And that's where some of our trig and unit circle work is going to come into play.